Hey, tonight at uh, 7.30 at the Steinberg Family Complex in St. Louis, part of the Jewish Book Festival, our next guest is going to appear, and he's going to be talking about his new man, his new book, now out in paperback. The book is called Superman. And let me get the official title here. Superman, the high-flying history of America's most endearing hero, Superman. This is the man who was on the show earlier with his book about Satchel Paige. Larry Ty, welcome back to St. Louis, and welcome back to the Big 550 KTRS. Great to be back with you. First, let's talk about Superman. Many things to talk about Superman, but you basically, this is the definitive book on Superman, the history, how, when, why, and all that? Yes. Um, trying to understand why Superman has lasted for 75 years. He just turned 75 last summer, and why he's our longest-lived hero of the last century. And it's what? also a way for um, me to pretend that I'm 10 years old again. If you can call up work, <laughs> watch old George Reeves TV shows, and read comic books for years, not a bad way to make a living. I, I agree with you. Watching old Superman, black and white, the young kids today don't get it. That old Superman with George Reeves is the best. Um, but it, Superman lasted 75 years is because nobody can kill him because they can't find kryptonite now. That's definitely part of the reason. The other reason is that he's evolved more than the fruit fly. The hero who started as a butt-kicking New Deal liberal. In the 40s, he helped take us to war. In the 50s, he was out there looking for a red under every bed along with the rest of America. And about six months ago, in showing that he was keeping up with the times, he quit the Daily Planet and became a blogger. Really? He really did. What? He's a book. blogger? But, of course, what he quits, he can rejoin the next day. It's all about. And so we could kill him off today and bring him back to life tomorrow. And he's had more lives than any hero, I think, over the last 75 years as well. The, your, your book, Superman, Larry Ty, goes into uh, how the creators actually came with the whole idea. Give us a sense of, of how, they, how Superman came to be. Sure. So two young Jewish kids in a neighborhood of Cleveland, Ohio, that was 70% Jewish, in the 1930s needed a hero in their own life. These were two scrawny kids who were a little bit too short and a little bit too fat, and who every day when they went out of the playground would be bullied. And they needed a hero, and one night Jerry Siegel drew up his notion of what this hero might look like, and it looked like what we see today is Superman. And when we think about where these kids came up with the hero, two kids who needed one for themselves, I think that, I don't know about you, but I know that I've been at times in uh, felt like I was alone on the playground and needed a hero for myself. And I think that's the key to the success. It's partly the way he changed over the years to look like he was always a contemporary hero. And it's partly that we all need, we all want to think that when we're out on the playground and somebody's picking on us, that if only those girls were smart enough to see within us, they'd see that there was really, it wasn't really about Clark Kent, it was about the Superman that lies within each of us. That's really interesting. And then they just got this crazy notion to make a comic book out of it? They did, and they were so desperate to find a publisher after five years of trying and nobody being willing to take it, that they sold the rights to their Superman character in every form that he would ever take forever, for a grand total of $130 to be divided between the two of them. So if we think that um, Manhattan got a bargain when they bought the islands from the Indians, uh, DC Comics got the all-time bargain when they bought this billion-dollar character for $130 back in 1938. You're telling me that the people who invented Superman got $130 out of it, and that's it? Well, so that's the bad news is that all they got was $130 for the ownership rights. The good news was they were made famous. They were making the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in today's terms back then when DC Comics hired them to write the character. All they gave the, uh, the comic book company in the beginning was one story of Superman. And that story over the years helped make them rich, not as rich as they thought they had the right to be, but helped make them also famous. From two kids who might have ended up living in their parents' attic forever, these became two of the all-time icons in the comic Larry Ty, our guest, his uh, new book is called Superman, The High-Flying History of America's Most Endearing Hero, now out in paperback, and he'll be at the uh, Jewish Book Festival tonight, 7.30, for a book signing and a book reading at the uh, Steinberg Family Complex. You, you write in the book, Superman, that the Daily Planet 
wasn't based on New York, but on Cleveland. Well, it was based on Cleveland in terms of uh, that being where they grew up and where Jerry had dreamed about being a reporter. But the actual Daily Planet was probably modeled after where Joe Schuster had come from before he moved to Cleveland, which was Toronto. And there was a Toronto Star newspaper, and that was what he grew up with. And people think that that may be where the Daily Planet came from. But it didn't matter. They were never really specific about just where in the Midwest um, Superman was spending his time and just what city Metropolis was, because they wanted us to believe that those were all of our hometowns, every small town in America, and every big city in America. So was it St. Louis or Manhattan that was a model for Metropolis? Who knows? Larry, you also say Superman is Jewish. I do say that. <laughs> I say that actually over the course of this 75-year history, that every religion on the face of the earth has embraced him as theirs. The story the Christians tell is that a faraway figure somewhere off in the heavens sends his only son down to show mankind that it can be better than it thought it could be. And in Sunday schools all across America, they use Superman as telling the story of Christ. Uh, Buddhists say, wait a minute, Superman is the ultimate Zen-like hero. And if you Google the word Superman and Buddhism, you'll see long treaties written on the Zen of Superman. Atheists and agnostics say, who needs religion? Superman is a secular messiah. He knows instinctively right from wrong. But I'm here in St. Louis today to tell you that Superman, in fact, is Jewish. And it's not just that his creators were Jewish. I told you the story of Superman as the Christ story. What Jews tell is the story of parents trying to save their firstborn son. And there's no river around to float him out into, so they float him out into space. He ends up in the American heartland adopted by two Gentiles named John and Martha Kent. And they raise him and realize they've got an exceptional child. And according to Jewish lore, this is the story of Moses and Exodus. And do you know what Superman's name was when he came down from Krypton? Kal-El. Hi, it's uh, Kal-El. And Kal-El in Hebrew means the all-embracing or the voice of God. And I don't think it's accidental that these two Jewish kids gave us a hero who had so many Jewish elements to his story, but it doesn't really matter. It's Again, Superman is everybody's hero, so whatever religion you come from, you can claim him as yours. Uh, Josh, was uh, Superman circumcised? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it would have been pretty difficult. Imagine the uh, what kind of a, a tool you would have needed to do that. I think that um, uh, there have been actually long essays written about how Superman was circumcised and how he cut his hair, given his super strength. So it's not that crazy of a question. Um, not you, a crazy question, though. Josh, uh, excuse me, uh, Larry Ty, you also say that you know he's Jewish because every name that ends in man is Jewish. Right. So next time your listeners see the word S-U-P-E-R-M-A-N, they should know it's not pronounced Superman, it's Superman. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a great story. Was there a curse? Is there a curse for actors playing Superman? Uh, it sure looked like there was. So George Reeves, the first guy who really played with any distinction the character of Superman, ended up shooting himself. He was found dead in his bed with a German Luger at his night table. And that began what we think of as the curse of Superman. We all know that Christopher Reeves, the guy who played him in the uh, 1970s and 80s, four separate movies, he ends up getting into an accident, thrown from a horse, and is paralyzed. There are, in the course of the history of Superman, one bad thing after another seems to happen to people, starting again with Jerry and Joe, who got ripped off for $130. On the other hand, when you're around for 75 years and you have thousands of people involved in your history, bad things are bound to happen. The book is called Superman, The High-Flying History of America's Most Endearing Hero. Larry Ty is going to be in St. Louis tonight, 730, for a book signing and a book reading. Larry, uh, have a safe trip in town. Thanks for spending a couple minutes with us, and good luck with the book. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. You got it. 847 here, Big 550, KT.